floor. Um, every dorm room in a traditional hall, we have three tr traditional halls here on campus, uh, they come with two desks, two chairs, two um, armoires, um, two beds, and two drawer sets. And then um, they come with a micro chill. And so the micro chill has a microwave on top and then the fridge down here on the bottom. So you can see how much space there is in there. And this is uh, what it would look like decorated. And yep, uh, so in the traditional halls, there's about 20 to 30 residents per floor. Um, and there's also an RA on every floor, and that's what I'm at, I am, we're resident assistants. Uh, and basically, we're just looking after um, the students, specifically on our floors, but pretty much for the whole campus. We make sure that everybody's being safe, um, doing well in their classes. Uh, we show people their classes when they first get to campus, if they're not sure where to go, we take them to their first night of dinner. And we also host activities, floor programs. Uh, and that could be anything from a tie-dye night, a paint night to like uh, an educational culture night. And RAs also throw programs for the whole campus um, sometimes. So we did a milkshake bar in our campus center where students could come up and tell us what kind of ice cream they wanted and we'd put it in a mason, mason jar for them and they'd get to take a little milkshake with them somewhere. Um, so on each floor in the traditional halls, there are four single bathrooms. So there's no um, community bathrooms, which is really nice. Um, and then every hall has a resident director. Um, and that director is a professional who oversees the running of that hall, oversees the RAs, and then helps with any um, bigger problems that are above the level of the RAs because we're just students. Um, so yeah, Jordan, you wanna take it? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I've lived on campus the last three years, and I'm actually living on campus right now, currently. I actually lived, like, right across the hall from this room <laughs> last year. Um, so every, um, like, every dorm in the lobby has a printer, so um, that's one of the things that you don't need to bring. Like, if you come here, it's literally at the end of your hall. Um, they're also just located in random places around campus as well. Um, if you come take a tour here, like that's my favorite thing to do. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt. I'll point out all the different printers that we see on campus. Um, and we also have um, our Center for Student Success here. And so they're a really good resource for us. Um, they handle academic services and disability accommodations. Um, I personally actually went through them to get an emotional support animal accommodation and so um, my dog has actually lived with me here on campus as well those past three years. Um, and so other things that you can get through the CSS um, for accommodation wise, we actually have like a private test taking room where there are like blinders and individual seating. There's white noise machines and foam earbuds you can put in. So it's a nice, quiet, distraction free place to take your quiz or exam if that's what you need. And you take it at the same time that you would be taking it in your regular class just in that room. Um. Yeah, uh, we also, just to give a little overview of what campus is kind of like, so there are three regular dorm halls and that's, um, we're in Carlisle right now. Um, so all of the rooms look pretty much like this in the traditional halls, but there's also the townhouses and the Darling Learning Center. Um, the townhouses are a, almost like apartment living um, and you do have to be an upperclassman to be able to live in those dorms. I'm um, actually living there right now. Oh, nice. Um, so it's four people to a townhouse. You get your own room. It's basically half of everything that you see in this room. You have your, well, and no um, micro chill because you have like a full kitchen with your own like actual like big fridge um, and a stove, the nicest washer and dryer that I've ever used in my <laughs> entire life. Um, they're so fancy. There's two bathrooms and like a full like living room and then a dining area as well. 
Um, yeah. Um, and then the other housing option is the DLC, um, the Darling Learning Center, and that's primarily upperclassmen as well, but we do have a health um, wing, which is like, I believe, nursing, PT, and also occupational therapy, I think, or also maybe pharmacy. I believe it's just all of the health majors at Hudson. Um, first years can have the option to live on that floor. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much upperclassmen. And those rooms are sweet, sweet style. And so there's two bedrooms, um, a common area, and then a bathroom. And that is for four people. So if you <laughs> um, need to want to live on campus and you're a first year, um, you will need to fill out your housing intent form. Um, and that is located on your My Housing portal. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, websites and logins and a lot of stuff to keep track of. So if you go to your student portal, that will have all of your billing and your class schedule, all of that information on it. There will also be a tab that says My Housing. So you can click on that and it'll take you to the housing portal. And from there, you're going to be able to fill out your housing intent form, which will basically just be you saying, yes, I wanna live on campus. And then you also get to fill out questions related to um, roommate. So if you are a first year and you're not really sure who you wanna live with, you don't know anybody on campus, um, you can fill out the roommate information. And it's basically you just saying, I usually wake up this early, I go to sleep this late, I like to study in my room or I like to study elsewhere, I like to have friends over, I don't like to have friends over. You can also talk about your hobbies, um, that sort of thing. And that will help match you up with somebody who is similar in interests. You can also, um, like on their requests, like if you want um, your roommate, if you have like a preference, if they, you want them to be your same age, your same major, um, or like similar um, living style. Another thing um, you can put is like how messy and how like tidy you keep your room. Um, yeah. That's a really important one for I think first years too because you want to be comfortable in the place that you're living um, as a first year student at any time, but especially that first year can be tough if you're living with somebody whose lifestyle is different from yours. Um, and then also on that housing portal, separate from the intent form, there's a roommate selection um, box if you do have somebody specific in mind who you wanna live with. Um, so that person would also have to request you, uh, but you would just go in, enter their full name and select them. And um, as long as they also select you, you will probably get paired up. Um, and then once you move in together, after all of the paperwork's been filed, hopefully within the first few days that you're on campus, you're going to fill out your uh, roommate agreement, which is a form that you both fill out together, um, or if you live in, a, in one of the DLC suites, all four of you would wanna sit down and fill it out together. And it's basically an agreement saying, um, I'm okay with people coming over in this space on these specific days or whenever. You can borrow my stuff if you want to, or I'd prefer if you didn't touch any of my stuff or ask me first. Um, so questions like that, um, basically, how are we gonna get along together? And that's a really good fail safe if there is a disagreement. Um, you can take that and you can say, remember when we filled this out, we had agreed upon this, and then hopefully that can be solved from that discussion of, you're right, I forgot that I said that um, this is how I wanted it to be. Uh, so, yeah, that would be your roommate agreement, and your RA would hopefully help you guys fill that out together and go over it with you when you get to campus. Um, so your room assignments, if you're a first year, will come out the week of July 5th, at the latest, it will be that next week, um, but it will most likely be the week of July 5th. Um, and that'll tell you what hall you're gonna be in and who your roommate will be. 
Um, I get this question a lot on tours. Um, are the dorms co-ed? So yes, the doors are co-ed, but, co but the floors in them aren't necessarily. We have um, different floors designated for different populations. Um, and do we still have themed living? Yep. Yeah, so um, I think they they do a NESCOM one, and there's like the health sciences one. I think business. Business, is the other yeah. One. So they do it by major, but I also think that there are, sometimes they do it by, um, like if you're uh, participating in a sport, sometimes they'll put you with the other people who are playing that sport too, so you're with other people you know. Oh. Um, so we're just going to look around the room again, just so everybody can get a good idea of what it looks like. So uh, we were standing right next to the desk. Um, each room comes with two desks, two chairs, this bed, it's a twin extra long. Um, and then under the bed, we have a set of drawers and we'll have the micro chill. And then in the corner way over here, is an armoire and that has like a place for hangers and in the bottom there's drawers as well and every room comes with two of those and two of the drawers I didn't say um, and then one micro chill. The trash cans are not provided in the rooms but every hall will have um, trash recycling and like a can and bottle return bin as well at the end of the hall. There's also um, by the bathroom, there's d um, trash cans there. I actually, my freshman year, I lived across the hall from the bathroom, so yeah. I use that trash a lot. <laughs> nice. Um, we also, it might be a little obvious, we have free Wi-Fi here. Um, and then there's also a cable hookup um, that we have like a basic cable package that you can just like screw into the back of your TV. Um, watch yeah. stuff. Um, and there's also, uh, there is not a phone hookup anymore, but there is a pay phone in each of the res halls. Um, so if you're a person who doesn't like to use your phone, uh, you can uh, use the pay phones. There is one second fridge allowed per room, so in addition to the micro chill. I think that there are um, rules on how big that fridge is allowed to be. Uh, you can find those, and any other information that we didn't cover, you can find on the Hassan Residence Life uh, website. Um, just Google Hassan Residence Life, something will come up and you can find it, more information from there. Also, if you do have any questions, you can call the Hassan Residence Life office. Um, Again, you can Google that phone number, or uh, you can email uh, reslife at hassan.edu, so R-E-S-L-I-F-E at hassan.edu. Um, I did already say that, but roommates will be released the week of, the, of July 5th, so you'll get your room placement, what hall you're in, and you'll also be told who your roommate is that week of July 5th. Uh, I just want to throw in uh, a back to the micro chill. Uh, you don't have to like pay for it. Um, you don't have to like request it. It's literally just in here when you move in, um, which is really nice. You don't have to like rent it out for the semester or anything like that. Um, so the dining hall is right there. You can't see it because all the windows are closed. Um, but it's legitimately like right outside the windows here, and pretty much for every dorm, it's very close. It's always within walking distance um, and because it you know it snows a lot here um, so when the ground is covered in snow it's not too treacherous of a walk it's like genuinely right there which is really nice and it's a great building great staff amazing food if you're wondering about the food it's really good um, that's something you don't need to worry about do you have anything? <laughs> just the question. Um, so uh, the how is adjusting to the twin size bed? Um, what? <laughs> it was okay. Uh, if you get like a, a mattress pad, it's fine. Um, I actually had to share my bed with my dog. He liked to sleep with me at night, so he just jumped up there. But it it's doable. Um, you can get like. I actually have these cool sheets that actually have like a pocket on the side so I can like oh. put stuff in the side pocket instead of losing it. It is, a, there has been many times where I've dropped something on the floor and like 
go for it without yeah. getting off. You guys know. <laughs> yeah. You can also um, move the beds up and down. So if you wanted one of the beds lower, you can put it lower um, just so you're not dropping yeah. things on the ground. They don't break when you drop them. Um, and then you can also uh, make them like a bunk beds. Bunk beds. That was the word. You can make them bunk beds to take up less space. Um, okay. Uh, so in terms of laundry, in the traditional halls, all of the laundry rooms are in the basements. Um, they, it's free. It's free. You just have to walk to the basement, put your laundry in, and that's that's it. Um, we do have uh, Laundry View, which is a service where you scan the QR code that's on one of the posters near the laundry machine, and it will tell you in your building which machines are being operated and which ones are empty so that you don't waste a trip to the basement because it's a few stairs for sure. Um, and then in the DLC, the laundry rooms are on the fourth and fifth floor. And then you already talked about in the townhouses, they're really nice. Yeah, they're all like <laughs> um, digital. They have like all of these like different settings um, and like almost like AI to them. Like it will oh. like de detect like when it's dry um, and like stop itself. Um, and I let that so there's three bedrooms on the second there are two floors in the townhouses so there's three bedrooms upstairs and a bathroom up there and then there's a bedroom and a bathroom on the first floor and I have the first floor so I'm right across the hall from the laundry the washer and dryer nice. it's pretty nice, nice. Um, there's about 20 to 30 people on the floors and Elevators um, in the dorm buildings are in Bell Hall and um, the Darling Learning Center. Um, so in terms of like the layout of what the halls look like. Um, it's like three hallways <laughs> that meet at a center stairwell. Yeah, it's I'm trying to think of like what would be a good way to describe that shape. A but why? A why. It's like a Y. <laughs> and so they, they connect and then they have the center stairwell that like spirals up and then spirals down to the basement and each of them branch off from there. I always like to say um, like they're baby staircases. So um, like if you don't worry if you get placed on the ninth floor, it's really only like technically the third floor. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's good to get your steps in anyway, for sure. Let's see, what else about and great school, great programs. Um, so if you are living with roommates, um, you can choose to share things. Uh, it might make it easier if like you brought a broom that you could both use or the floors are tile, but you could um, bring a vacuum if you chose to do that or like a Swiffer. Most of the cleaning products I would recommend sharing because they can get kind of expensive. Um, so it's just easier if you share the same ones for the whole room. Um, I know I have some friends who share like laundry detergent and um, things like that too. Uh, just things that would make it easier, maybe like floor lamps, um, lights around the rooms, that sort of thing. Rugs. Rugs, oh yeah. Yep, or other furniture if you chose to bring um, like a beanbag chair or something like that. So um, in terms of visitors on campus, the it the visitor policy has changed a little bit over the past few years just because of COVID. Um, so the rule was that we could have guests but not visitors. So guests would be people who live on Husson campus. So anybody from Bell, Bell Hall, could come visit anybody in the DLC or Hart or Carlisle if they wanted to. Um, but if there's somebody who doesn't live on campus, they are not allowed inside the dorm halls. So even if it is a student in a class with you, if they don't live on campus, they're not allowed to come into your dorm. Um, those policies are changing pretty frequently, same with the mask policy and all of that. So I would just 
your RA should also let you know, but um, just keep an eye out on what those policies are. So your rooms themselves will not be cleaned by um, custodial, so that is why you'd probably want to bring your own cleaning products. Um, and like a boot tray or shoe yeah, type of thing. Because it gets really muddy in the winter and it's very easy to track your dirt into the rooms. Um, so custodial doesn't take care of that, but they do keep the halls and the bathrooms so nice and clean and all of the um, classroom buildings so clean. There are no laundry room hours. There is no curfew. I will talk though about um, quiet hours and courtesy hours. So we have uh, what's called 24 hour courtesy hours. So that means that 24 hours, you just need to be aware that you live with other people. The walls are thin because you live in a traditional hall. So, um, you know, just be aware that if you're screaming, even if it's 2 p.m., you're going to be disturbing somebody. So that's kind of what 24-hour quiet hours um, are. It's just, or courtesy hours, I mean. Just be courteous to the people around you. And then we have what's called quiet hours. Uh, so during the week, those are from midnight to, I believe, 6 a.m., and then on the weekends, it would be 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, those hours might not be spot on, but it would be something like that. And quiet hours are quiet hours. So that's like, even if your music isn't so, so loud, it's just, it, it needs to be very quiet. No screaming, no shouting. If you're playing video games, keep it to a dull roar, that sort of thing. So if you're trying to study or sleep and you have a, big test the next day, or you just are watching some shows with friends and you want to be able to pay attention to what's happening, um, you'll be able to do that. Um, so if you wanted to get a rug for one of the, for your dorm room, the recommended rug size would be four feet by six feet. Um, the Eagle Safe app is um, an app that you can download on your phone. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can use it here. Um, one of the main ways is to contact security. Um, you can call them directly on it. You can leave an anonymous tip. You can request rides, which is great when we have like a rainy or snowy day and you have to get across campus. Um, I've actually had to call them before because I've left my keys, locked my keys in my car, um, locked my keys in my dorm room. <laughs> um, that's probably one of their biggest like calls is locked keys um, in dorm room. Um, but you can also uh, view the dining hall's menu on there for like the next like few weeks, and then um, there's no like parking restrictions or um, like permits uh, for any students, including first year students. You don't have to pay a fee or anything. You just go onto the app and um, register your car, put in your make and model information, license plate number, type of student you are, residential or commuter, and then you're all set to park on campus. So the bathrooms um just going off of a question we just got the bathrooms are um so there's four and they're singles so uh there's no communal anything um so you would walk in and there's gonna be a sink and toilet shower there is a handicapped shower that's very large um and then even the other showers are pretty decently big uh, so you wouldn't need to worry about uh, size or anything like that. You'll have room to manage. The bathrooms are very nice. They got redone pretty recently. Yeah, I didn't actually tour the college before I came here. I came here for like basketball camp in like eighth grade, and so I thought I would be fine. And when I came here, they were like locker room style, a bunch of different toilets, a bunch of different showers and sinks. And so when I finally moved in, I was pleasantly to, surprised to um, find, we call them pods. Um, the basically single stall bathrooms. They lock behind you so you can stay as long as you want. And you never run out of hot water. It's true, that's true. And the water pressure is pretty good too, depending on what floor you're on. Um, but even on the like floors where it's not as good, it's still pretty good. 
Um, so there are virtual tours on the we on um, Hassan's website. If you just look up Hassan Residence Life, you'll be able to find where it says virtual tours, and then you'll be able to like drag and click through a 3D version of the um, dorm rooms. Um, yes, there is a posted bathroom cleaning schedule. They do it um, like Monday through Saturday, I believe. Yeah, and they like check it off. And there is an on-call um, custodial person, so if there's ever like a big mess or a spill or something, there's somebody to call who can come help. Um, I also wanted to talk about, you had mentioned a little bit of safety and security because of the Eagle Safe app. Safety and security is like your best friend. Make friends with them because you're going to need them, um, not for safety reasons, but just f they're so nice. and. My car got stuck one time and I had like four safety and security officers trying to p help me push this car out for hours and hours. Um, they'll always come get you if you're locked out of your room. If you're ever having any serious issues, they'll help you or they'll help you find who can actually help you. Safety and security is the best, absolutely. Don't be f frightened of them. They're there to help you just as your RAs and RDs are. They'll also help you with things like you wouldn't expect. Like I mentioned, like locking um, my keys in my car. Also, if you have like a flat tire, or your car battery dies, yeah. um, anything like that. Um. They also have a golf cart. So I know that a lot of times um, you had mentioned about rides um, for the sports kids. People tear their knees or break their ankles or stuff all the time and they have to crutch around campus. Safety and security is so cool. They'll just put you in that little golf cart and drive you anywhere you want to go. They're so nice because I think they like driving the golf cart. Um, but yeah, safety and security is awesome. Um, he wanted us to get a close up of the drawers. Oh, the desk. The desk and the drawers, okay. So that's one of the desks. There will be two in every room. Um, so you can see, oh, that's how far the drawer comes out. And that bottom one is even bigger than that. So. And then we also have, we'll show you these drawers over here. And you can arrange your room however you want to. Once you get here, you can move um, these out from under here. If you wanted to do a bunk bed sort of situation, you could lower this and move it against a wall. However you can think to assemble your room, you are allowed to do that. Um, so here are, there's three of these size drawers and then um, each roommate will have one of those. Okay, what was, there was another question. It's in, um, student life resources. Student life resources. Go to Hassan's website. <laughs> um, but also, uh, like resources on campus um, would be like your RAs, your resident assistants, and those are students like myself um, who live on the floor with the residents in one of the rooms who are pretty much available almost all the time if they're not in class or at work or whatever other responsibilities they have going on, but they live here. So um, if you ever need anything, that is your first um, resource that you'd want to go to. You're locked out, you're having roommate problems, you aren't passing your classes, you don't know where your class is, um, ask your RA, they're gonna help you with anything you need. Um, and if they can't, they're gonna find you somebody who can. And then you also have your RD, who is your resident director, and they're a professional who runs the building. Um, and so they supervise the RAs and all of their programming that you, they do. Um, and yeah. Some other resources, um, we have our wellness center and so our students are able to get free health and counseling services there. Um, you can have different like vaccines, you can have blood drawn. Um, you can go there if you're not feeling well and get sort of like a self-help baggie with like some ginger ale, crackers, Advil. One of my friends actually got a can of soup one time. Um, and it's run by like nurse practitioners and um, the nursing staff he um, here at Husson. And um, the exam rooms look exactly like they do in a regular doctor's office. Uh, I actually had to go one time because I fell asleep wearing my contact lenses. Um, the contact was never found. Well, that was the point. I woke up and it was gone and 
<laughs> that's why I went there. Um, so the exam was free um, for me to go to, and they were really nice, and the contact was never found. But <laughs> you, that's an option for you. You can go there. Um, and counseling services. Yeah. Um, you can get counseling services there, too, as well with um, another um, nurse practitioner. And those are free. Um, all of those services are free. If you did want to get additional testing, um, sometimes you have to pay for that. Or if there's like medication or prescriptions that you need, you would have to pay for that stuff um, through insurance and all that jazz. But all of the counseling services are free. A lot of the um, nurse practitioner hours are free. So the counselors are great. And the nurse, all of everybody in the wellness center is amazing. Even if you're not sure what the issue is, and you just need to talk to somebody, go to the wellness center, they'll help you out. We also have um, a chapel in one of our buildings here. Um, and so that's open 24 seven. Um, there's a university chaplain, it's non-denominational, so it's not for any one specific faith or religion. Um, so go there for your spirituality needs. Um, and we have lots of clubs and stuff, and one of them is crew, um, and they operate out of the chapel. They do a lot for the community, and there's tons of other clubs and organizations that you can get involved with. Um, but going towards some of the questions we've been asked, so welcome weekend, no, new student orientation, welcome weekend. Welcome weekend is August 27th, um, so that's for first years, and they will be moving in August 27th. Uh, and then storage in terms of storage in your dorm rooms um trying to find places to put things underneath the bed underneath best the spot bed. yeah absolutely you can fit a lot of stuff under there yeah or like stacked on top of i don't know if you could see over here when you panned over there's um like bins and stuff and so there's some storage room up there you can put stuff on top of there i heavily recommend under the bed you could just stick a lot of stuff under there um, so, yeah, can we show the armoire again? So the top is um, where you could hang things, and there is some storage up above there, too, and then you have the two drawers. So in terms of storage, like, I never had any problems fitting everything in my room. Uh, I don't know if that's just because I'm a light packer, uh, but I never, there was always some somewhere for something to go, even in a dorm room with another roommate, so. I actually got lucky and had a double room as a single, both of my oh, nice. two years in the actual oh, room as well. So speaking of, we do have single options, um, so there are medical singles, which would be like medically necessary. You need to have a single for your well-being. Um, you can get those, or if you just would like to request have a single for any reason, you can request that. Um, there are a lot of people want singles, so um, sometimes they're hard to come by, but absolutely, if you want one, put in the request and they will try to work that out for you. We also have deluxe singles, which are fancy singles with a bigger bed um, and a little bit nicer furniture, too. I don't know if there was another question. Oh, oh there was. describe the move-in process. Describe the move-in process. So, I am an RA for the DLC, so our, ours might be a little bit different from what the traditional halls are like, but basically, you would show up, come to the door, find some people sitting at a desk that said, move in whatever hall you're living in um, and those people will be your RAs or the RD and they're going to show you to your room and give you your key and then you're just gonna bring your stuff from your uh, uh, car whatever you brought your U-Haul to your room hopefully not a U-Haul we'll have to talk about storage if that is the case um, but yeah, it's uh, pretty uncomplicated. Like I said, the only buildings with elevators are Bell and the DLC. So um, there is a, a bit of walking. I would bring the whole family to help you move in if you're moving in for the first time. It can be a lot sometimes, um, even just for emotional support. 
move in volunteers. Oh, we do have move in volunteers. Um, I think they just help you move in. Uh, <laughs> they help you carry things. I, my first year as an RA when we did move in, it was COVID. So we didn't have anything like that. But I do think we had them last year and I'm sure we will have them again for the fall. Um, and it's just uh, student volunteers who are helping people move their furniture in. Once you get here, you'll see a big crowd of people. They'll help you. They'll, they'll wear like a special like shirt and they'll just be like outside walking around and like walk up to you and ask you if you need help with anything. And then you can either decline or accept their help. <laughs> I um, would accept <laughs> if I were you. But, and yeah, then you just take them up to your room. Um, I forget what the other question was. Um, if you want yep. measurements for furniture, sorry, I'm just answering the question. Um, if you want measurements for the furniture or the room dimensions or anything like that, go on Hassan's webpage. Um, it will have the specific numbers uh, that you can look at for like buying rugs or other things to fit in the room. It will also tell you like a list of things that you can't bring. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like anything really that puts off heat, like an air fryer. Yeah. Um, a hot plate. Sometimes people try to bring toasters. You, you, here's the thing. If you really, really need toast, don't do it. But it, it will set the alarms off. And you don't want to be the person that set the alarms off at like 2 o'clock in the morning. That happens all the time. Don't be that person. It's always okay. burnt popcorn. And it's always burnt popcorn. That's true. So don't bring a toaster or anything that could create smoke or fire. Because that's just going to be a mess for everybody. Um, the other uh, question we got was, is there counseling um, available on campus? Uh, yes, there is. Through the Wellness Center, you can um, go through them to set up an appointment. Um, I'm not sure like the exact, like how many like visits per semester or week it is, but um, it's all free there and you can go there. Our students actually in the counseling program here um, do get experience over there. Um, working as well but you, that doesn't necessarily mean that when you go to a counseling session you're gonna have another student it won't be like that so um, I'm in the counseling program uh, and we do get to do some placement hours over there if we want but that's mostly just like um, to watch or observe and of course you'd have to say the okay um, in terms of how many times you can go a semester or a year as many times as you need to um, you can go whenever if you need it there's walk-in hours um, which are really really handy dandy uh, during finals week if you just need a minute you can walk into counseling and say I just need to talk to someone and they'll just let you in um, counseling center is awesome it is free and I was going to answer another question oh athletes um, there are no specific halls specific or floors specific to um, sports or teams, but usually they'll put um, people who are on similar teams uh, together um, just so you're with other people you know, especially as a first year. I know that they oftentimes put the first year students on the same team close to each other um, in the same floor or at least in the same hall. Um, so housing selection for upperclassmen is um, you can request a roommate the same way that you would as an underclassman um, through that housing intent form or through the housing portal. You still need to fill out the housing intent form. Um, and then on that housing intent form, it will have all of your interests, um, all of the things that you need in a living situation that you would fill in. And then they will um, put you with a roommate that has similar interests. In terms of where you're actually placed in the halls, um, I am not sure because at one point you could choose a specific room that you wanted to be in and that is still the case. So when you're an upperclassman and you're doing housing selection, you can specifically choose what room and what hall you want to be placed in, which is super cool. Yeah. What was surge? surge protector size? Uh, there's two out outlets on each side of the room. So there's like one on top of the other right there. And then the same thing on the opposite side. So definitely bring like power strips, surge protectors, um, anything like that. 
electricity extension cords you Lots don't actually need to bring electricity things for <laughs> electricity um it's under the bed it is under the bed under the bed. unless you move the beds and then it wouldn't technically be under the bed but where the beds are right now yeah the wi-fi is um in the dorms it's pretty good in the classrooms uh classroom areas it's really good at the nescom building it's really good um, it just also depends on how many people are using it at a certain time. Um, so, but it's, it's good enough. I know tons of people play, um, games online, um, and it seems to work for them to do that, which is probably the most, like, Wi-Fi heavy thing you'd be doing. Um, you can absolutely stream videos and movies and that sort of thing, and it will work every time, so. Um, you can bring, like, a, a TV. Uh, I actually brought like an extra piece of like furniture to like put my TV on because I didn't trust the desk um, <laughs> for it because it's a big TV. Um, you can also bring like different like gaming systems, um, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, um, really any, anything. Yeah. Um, pretty much you can bring anything to campus as long as it's not like a danger. There is a list. There's a list online. Look at the list of things you cannot bring. Um, for the most part, as long as it's not like a danger to anybody, it's not going to overwhelm the outlets. Um, you'll be fine to bring it. Um, so if you want to hang things up, you definitely are going to want to use like um, command or 3M uh, strips or like uh, s sticky tack. Um, I wouldn't use tape or tacks because the tacks will leave holes in the wall. And then the tape, as uh, soon as you try to take anything off of the wall that's on there with tape, you're going to peel the paint off. Um, and you probably don't want to do that unless you want to pay to repaint it or have to go buy paint um, that would not be fun so definitely hang stuff using command hooks command strips or the 3m strips yep um let's see i'll talk about maybe just bangor in general for students who are coming to the area who aren't from here um it's a great place. It's right next to Orono where they have um, another university. So it's a very popular area for young people. Um, you'll definitely find your people here. Um, it's, I know coming in as a freshman, it can be kind of daunting and scary to have to make new groups of friends, um, especially if you're coming from far away, but you will find other people who have similar interests as you here. Um, if not right at Hassan in the Bangor area, especially with like clubs and stuff like that. There was another question. Um, so you could bring us a, a stool uh, for your bed. I know a lot of people have gotten one. Um, me, I'm one of those people that just does the run and jump um, <laughs> or like I step on my chair. There's also like bars at the end of the bed that you can like use as like a ladder too. Um, I have but, a stool. I have short little legs, so I have a stool because running and jumping every day is not really not really going to be fun for me <laughs> hurt myself that's how i would hurt myself honestly all right what was that other question what are you involved in oh what are we involved in lots of things so i'm an ra um that's probably the biggest like time consumer that i have um and also there's a psychology club. My undergrad was um, psychology. So I was in the psychology club. I minored in English. So I was also in the English club, which is called the Get Lit, like literature club. Um, and so we host a lot of events, um, which is like poetry readings or um, like music and singing or just uh, quite a few events that are more art themed. Um, and then also uh, we have a thing called Peer Educators, um, which is like a mentor group basically for people who are struggling who don't really feel like they want to go to counseling. Um, and yeah, there's lots of, lots of things. I, tried, I started a pep band, COVID hit, but we started a little tiny pep band. 
Um, I played the drums, uh, but we were small. We had a sousaphone. Very fun, very fun. Not very good, but very fun. So if you're interested in music at all, um, I know the Nescom kids also have their own band uh, going, but uh, absolutely look into what Hassan has for clubs. I am not involved in a lot. Um, <laughs> I have had my Eagle Ambassador as my work study job here for since my freshman year here, and so um, that's really my only thing. Um, I am in the occupational therapy program here, uh, so next fall I actually plan on joining um, the club that's for that major. So at Hudson, we have clubs for just about every like major that we offer here, as well as like other things. Um, and so like, it's pretty tradition that like you join your club that's in your major. I didn't do that yet, but I'm gonna. <laughs> the, the occupational therapy club does a lot too. I have some friends who are in there and they are very active in the community trying to help homeless population and so many different groups um, of individuals in the area. We actually um, partnered with the IT department and um, 3D printed like a hand for, um, a, it, she was like seven, it was like a little girl um, just outside of Bangor. And That's, that is so cool. Well, the reason like we did it is because um, like if you're born with a without like a limb, it's not insurance companies consider that cosmetic and not like necessity. So um, prosthetics are expensive. Kids outgrow them very quickly yeah. or break them. And so this was sort of our way. I think we only like charged them seventy dollars just for like the printing material. Um, it's basically like a, a corn plastic. And so um, we printed that out for her, and like she was just like ecstatic. She's like, I can jump rope now. Like oh my it was. Gosh. We do a lot of like stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that is so cool. I didn't read the question. Um, so if you do want to learn about clubs, you can, again, go to the Hassan website um, and look. We have a whole list of all of the clubs at Hassan and um, I believe contact information, uh, like emails of the students who had those organizations. So you can email them and say, hey, I want to participate. If you also, when you get here in the fall, there's going to be flyers everywhere. Every Turner, you, every corner you turn, there will be at least 10 flyers. Um, so just look at those and they'll have more contact information on them about clubs. You can also call the student activities office or email student activities or um, res life. Somebody will point you in the right direction. Your RA should be pretty knowledgeable about that as well. Um, so yeah, there's lots of information about clubs out there. Um, so jobs on campus, we have over 500 different positions on campus um, for students to work um, like as a work study job. And so if you're granted federal work study in your financial aid package, um, you can utilize those funds and work on campus here. But um, if you aren't granted um, that in your financial aid package, you don't need that to work on campus. Um, that's how I'm still able to work here throughout the summer and give tours. Um, so it's not coming out of my financial aid. Um, but like, I would definitely say if you're gonna work um, in college, uh, if you can't get a work study job, try to do it within like, I don't know, your first few years here because after that, me personally, um, like I'm in a five year program, so it's two years undergrad and three years graduate, and so like the next three years are like the really hard ones, and so I don't have a lot of free time to work and stuff, um, but so like I'm grateful that I did have my work study job the last few years, so I have saved a little bit, but um, yeah, you can work. I actually have, um, there's another Eagle Ambassador um, that I work with, and she had like that as a work study job, and then two other additional jobs at like um, a couple grocery stores as well, um, so it's definitely doable. Jobs are also a really great way to make friends and uh, like get involved in the community. I know it doesn't really seem like that would be, but it absolutely is because you could be working in the dining hall, you're gonna meet all of the dining staff and anybody who comes in the dining hall to eat, or if you were an Eagle Ambassador, like you're gonna meet all the incoming freshmen or anybody who needs help uh, from the Welcome Center, or pretty much any jobs on campus, you're gonna be working with the population of students here. Um, so it's a really great way to get involved with st other students. Um, so one of the questions we just got was, what is it like to be an RA? Um, so busy. It's very busy. Uh, 
I love it though. Uh, clearly I am like a people person. I'm a counseling major. I want to help people. So being an RA is a really good opportunity for me to do that. Um, I love looking after people and making sure that they have the resources that they need in terms of like mental well-being, physical well-being. Are they going to class? Are they passing their classes? Have they eaten in the last day? Like that sort of thing. I just like to make sure that people are taken care of. So um, for me, it's a really great job. Uh, we also do programming, um, which would be floor programs or big campus-wide events. So I talked earlier about a take and make um, milkshake program that we did where we basically students would come up and say, I like this kind of ice cream. We put it in a mason jar, give them some milk to go with it, and um, they would get this mason jar uh, of a milkshake. Um, and that's just one example of there's tons and tons and tons of programs. Uh, and so usually the RAs are the ones who are putting those on. We also do bulletin boards that have a bunch of information on them every month. Um, it changes. So the first month is usually like, who's your RA? Where is anything? Uh, who do you call if you're having this specific problem? But it can also be other things like during Pride Week, I know there's a lot of um, bulletin boards that are pride themed or certain things like that. Uh, what else do we do? So many things. We decorate our floors um, and we do uh, door decorations with people's names on them. So everybody will have at least two door decorations with their name on it. That's like a different shape. Our summer ones are popsicles um, that have people's names on them. Uh, so yeah, that's RA life. Where are jobs posted? So those are posted on um, Husson's website under the student employment. There's like a human resources area, student employment, and it has all of the jobs that are available for that semester um, on there. So you just go there and check it out and apply. Um, Larger student activities. What does that sentence say? Larger student activities. Activities. Okay. So student activities is also just a department in itself. Um, and so they run things like grocery bingo, which is a big hit because it's bingo, but when you get bingo, you get a big grocery bin full of groceries or a laundry bin full of groceries or laundry detergent, um, silverware, plates, bowls, cereal, like snacks and stuff. Uh, that's a big hit. Um, they also do big ticket bingo. So I think one year, one of the big prizes was a TV. Um, there, it, there was a lot of big prizes yeah. that year. It was like a 40 inch TV, AirPods, a Keurig, an Alexa, yeah. Google Home, uh, different gift cards. Yeah, so that's a that's a popular one as well, and they also do just tons of other programs throughout the year. Um, those are also posted on flyers everywhere. They also have something called the Toilet Times, which are uh, little, oh my gosh, right there, an example. It has all of the events on it for whatever month that was. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Um, it might be fake, but it basically will have like what the event is called, uh, where it's located, what time and what day it is. So you know every single day there's going to be something happening somewhere on campus. Yep. Uh, you had said something about the gym. Talk about the gym. So we have a gym and a fitness center. <laughs> so uh, we have the Newman gym, which is like the actual like basketball gym. Um, and so you can go there and play like open gym during certain times. There's like a schedule that will say like what time it's in use for practices or games or other events like that. And then in the back, um, like if you keep going past the gym, um, in the very back we have our Weber pool. Um, it's Olympic size. We have a swimming and diving team here. Um, and so it's the same type of deal with like the schedule. Um, and then attached to it, we have our Swan Fitness Center. And so that's sort of like Husson's version of like Planet Fitness. It's a free exercise gym. Um, you just show your student ID and you can actually get a work study job there, like checking student IDs and like wiping down equipment and stuff. Um, There's lots of jobs available at the gym. Like uh, they always need ball boys or ladies um, or like flaggers for volleyball games. Um, 
uh, timekeepers for basketball games and other stuff like that. Uh, there's tons and tons of opportunities for work at the gym too. So we got a question about um, singles. So there are singles that you can get that are like if you need um, accessibility services or something like a medical, medically necessary one. So um, if it is um, like a medically necessary or whatever reason you need to have that, you can talk to accessibility services. Um, which is in Peabody, one of our buildings. You can also look up on the Husson website the contact information. Um, I believe that Liz Atkinson is the person that you'd probably want to talk to about that. She is awesome um, and she'll help you figure out all of that. Or on your housing portal, there is a housing change form, um, housing change request form something along those lines and um, if you click on that that will give you the ability to request a single or request to change what you had already selected advice. so um to, if i was going to give advice to a first year student um i would definitely say um, time management um that's like the biggest thing especially like if you're going to play sports here um because you'll be a full-time athlete and have full-time courses with homework um, and so you'll want to be, you'll have to take care of yourself. You'll have to like go to the dining hall and eat and do your own laundry um, and clean your room and make sure that you're doing your homework and stuff. And so there's a lot of like self accountability there that um, it can be a real like learning curve and a process to get through. Definitely. Um, I would say my advice would be just maybe just kind of life advice, but find good friends who are going to look after you and make sure that you're making the right choices. And if you make the wrong choices, they're going to support you in finding the help that you need to fix the choices you made. Because um, college can be pretty difficult, especially if you're in a challenging major. Um, so having a good support system, people who care about you, um, that's very, very important. I know it can be challenging when you're a freshman and you're first um, getting to campus, but make sure that you prioritize that. Um, so I believe we do have open gym and open swim there. Um, I know before COVID, the, the uh, pool was actually open to community members and they were allowed to go and swim there, um, but I'm not sure if that's the case now. Um, it is the case now, um, so you can go there. Um, and so same thing with the, the gym. Um, and intramurals are actually just starting back up um, like this fall and like full swing. We have um, soccer, basketball, and I believe football. Um, and so there's like a, a website on that you can get to through the Husson website that will have like all the information about like how to sign up. There's also um, different posters um, around like campus that will have a QR code that you can scan with um, your phone and it will directly link you to like the sign up um, page for those. So specific advice for residents. As an RA, it would be to talk to your RA. If you are having roommate problems or basically any issues, just talk to your RA. It can't hurt um, and they can try to help you or point you in the right direction. I think sometimes people are a little hesitant to like bother their RAs. Just do it. That's why we're there. We are getting paid to do that. Just bother us and we wanna help you. So definitely reach out. Uh, so in the lobbies of all of the traditional dorms, I don't know how it works for the DLC, um, there are post office boxes, and so you'll get a room key for your actual room and a mailbox key. Letters and small things will go there. We have a mail room um, in like one of the main buildings on campus, so um, packages and big things will go there. You'll have an email sent to your Huston email account notifying you you have a package ready for pickup. So you just show up there, give them your name and sign for it, and you're all set. Um, in the DLC, the mailboxes are on the second floor, but it's the same sort of situation. You get a mail key. And um, I actually live in the townhouses, and so we, our mailboxes are actually in the room beside the, the mail room. It took me a while to figure out, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so good to know. If you're living in the townhouses, that's where they are.
Cool. Um, so if you have any more questions, absolutely email Hassan Reslife. So it would, the email is reslife at hassan.edu. So R-E-S-L-I-F-E at hassan.edu. Um, ask them any questions you have. Uh, and then, or you could also just call the office. I don't have the number right now, but you can. So uh, Hassan's direct line is 941-7000. And then the um, extension for ResLife is 941-7700. Wow, that's good. I work in the Res Life office, and I don't know that. I'm transferring calls all day. <laughs> okay. Um, so definitely just call. Uh, somebody will help you figure out any other questions that you have. Um, and I think that is going to do it. So thanks. <laughs>